river kayaking has seen dramatic developments in recent years. Nowadays, it isn't the white water of the valleys that attract, but the gorges and waterfalls of the mountains themselves. Snowdonia is an ideal location for this new game, and since the evolution of plastic kayaks, standards have risen higher and higher. This is the Alpon Gamelan. Nobody has kayaked the falls behind them, but one day, who knows? After all, these small, purpose-built plastic boats that are still called kayaks have developed so much lately, and that, more than anything else, has been responsible for the jump in standards. Kayakers can now afford to play on water that was considered impossible only five years ago. Of course, he should have caught the paddle at the bottom since he needs it again. Even the best fail sometimes. This is Sean Baker. He was the first to venture over the bigger waterfalls in Britain. Scuda Eira in South Wales, Conway Falls and the nearby Swallow Falls in 1986, which brought attention to this extreme form of the sport. With him are Paul Crisp and in the third boat, Chris Hipgrave. The three come from the Thames Valley, but they know these mountain streams intimately because every weekend they make the long trip to Wales to enjoy their unique form of freedom. Their commitment pays off because controlling a kayak in this water isn't easy. Being able to roll immediately is imperative. Their equipment helps, but some of it has been borrowed from other sports, since conventional kayaking gear doesn't meet their requirements. The main danger is getting trapped under the water, unable to escape, and a close inspection of the river is essential to clear any hidden hazards. Kayaker Tony Jarvis joins them. The standard rises and the nature of the sport takes on a more threatening complexion. Sean goes first. Chris follows. Traditional techniques still apply here, but swift reactions are more important. It only takes the lightest of touches to keep the kayaker on line and in control.
Paul comes next. He looks completely out of control, with everything left to chance. Right now he needs a barrel load of the most important quality for this sort of kayaking. Self-confidence. Did you enjoy that? Yes? Sure? Yeah, of course I did. Come off it. Honest. This was Tony's first waterfall. He won't forget it in a hurry. But it looked like he was saving his strength for something else. And this is it. The big gorge at Clamberes offers an awe-inspiring challenge. Here goes the first fall. I'm going to shoot this and then catch the break out the bottom. I'm putting myself and go to the big bastard. Well, that was a funny little fall, that one. Nice flat landing, mate. Right, here goes the big... The fall has never been attempted before, and the four men have the chance to push back the boundaries of kayaking even further. The main concern is the impact in the plunge pool. From this height, the green water will feel very hard. He is badly shaken, cannot roll, and is lucky not to be sucked under the water by the pressure on the back wall. He needs help fast and he gets it. But Chris also knows that his was the first descent. It's bad this, sitting at the top watching a friend hurt themselves. Not being able to help them. Not being able to hurt them and knowing you're just about to do exactly the same to yourself. Oh, it's so terrified. When you take off, you're just amazingly fast. Like hit the ledge. Can you remember anything about your descent? It was fast, I wasn't in control, and it hurt. Nasty jam is short. Watch that one. Encouraged by this useful information, Paul goes next. Ah, that boy. Ow. Blimey. Okay, here it goes. Yes! Yes! The technique is to lean to the right to avoid the sharp rocks on the left and then, after the big bump, straighten up and keep the kayak in front of you to punch a hole in the water to let your body enter through. Hand roll, go on, hand roll. That was a good run down. Nice throw line. Go on, pull him in Andy, quickly. And he's got his boat, that's good. Paul has also failed to roll, being pressed against the back wall, but his entry was as perfect as he could have hoped for. Are you OK? Good hand roll up, because I had all the wall coming down to my hands and the rock on the other side, so anyway, that's my excuse for the picture. Sean is next. Ooh. Flying the last bit, I knew a flat landing was coming up. I just didn't have the presence of mind to tilt my boat on its side. Are you okay, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? It's about the worst landing I've had. That was really flat, wasn't it? Oh, I was dead flat. I got the lead. <laughs> I got the roll, yeah. but I didn't get your nice entry. <laughs> and so he puts all those together. 
still have a beautiful descent. Tony has plenty of confidence. But now he's got a broken rib as well. You okay? It took some weeks for Sean's back to recover and for Chris to get rid of his bruises. Paul was the only one to survive this fall unscathed. Have you now reached the limit of what's possible? It's getting there, I think. <laughs> Certainly yeah. not going to do this one again. Yeah, it, it gets to a point where it's so high and you have so little control over the final angle of entry, for example, that you have to draw the line somewhere. And I think injuries, three out of four. I think this has got to be a good place to draw the line. Uh, without a doubt, this fall will be done again in the future. But given enough time, somebody else will do it again, and probably more successfully, having been able to see our exploits. I think there are younger people who are coming into the sport. For example, Tony, who's been brought up with this as his second waterfall. Anything smaller is going to seem easy to him, and certainly the sport's going to progress, certainly as technology increases. <laughs> Frightening. Frightening.